I think we're still all trying to get used to this Zoom thing still. <laughs> I, uh, oh, please, yeah. Tim. You, had to, you have to have had like 40 Zoom meetings. I know. I have these Zoom meetings, but it's not that I enjoy them. I like being in person. <laughs> no, I know. Well, we're up to 21, 22. It's going up. So uh, let's just make sure everybody can hear that we're ready to go. So I have no idea who all these people are, but it's just Linda. Linda this is Linda probably, that's probably Janae. Is that you, Janae? Yeah, I might be under my husband. I didn't see who I logged in under, so Linda but I'm Locke. here. It says Linda Locke. So oh my gosh, I think oh, that's funny. me. Yeah, that's so funny. But I'm here. Okay. I figured that was you because I I know I it was on me. Uh, We're up to twenty four people. Okay. Oh, well, well, call, started. What is that? Hello. A call. All right, we're going to start the meeting, I guess. 705, I think. Okay. Uh, Ty had sent out the minutes of the uh, October meeting. I like the picture, Ty. Or, um, yeah, Ty, that you put on there. <laughs> Of the, the guy with the, the uh, hollowed out tree is on his on his truck. So, it was such a it was such a good presentation. I thought it yeah. was a little embellishment rather than just a. The, I like that. I appreciate it. Yeah, I think that's very nice. Um, he did a nice job. He's he's one of those people. I think that's why Sita enjoyed him. Is that just talking and he had all these little bits of information that were just fun to hear. So. But I didn't see any um, real errors. I saw one little spelling error, but it's not worth changing anything. So if anybody has any corrections, if not, we'll just uh, approve as, as stated there. Do I hear anything? No, so we'll pass. No, nope. move to approve. All right. I think we'll approve it as written then. Uh, I'll be doing the treasurer's report uh, real quick. Not real quick, because I have some things to say. Uh, nothing's changed because we haven't had any money come in or out this last month. So the beginning balance is the same as the ending balance as of October um, 31st, and it's $3,742.47. Hi, Sharon. Nice to see you. <laughs> and uh, for our, our grant, we still have $5,000. We haven't uh, been able to or needed to really spend it yet. And so we're going to be uh, looking for people to give some just suggestions. The board members will also uh, be discussing a little further uh, ways to uh, either beautify or enhance our community. Um, what we've done in the past so far, I'm just going to review quickly so everybody remembers and anybody might, might make you think of something else. We did have that um, uh, utility box on Berryessa and Piedmont, that was ours, that's B BCAC paid for that painting. Um, I always smile every time I see it, it looks good. We cleaned and improved the uh, Piedmont Road at Old Piedmont Road. Uh, we worked with the city, it's not really quite the way we wanted to finish, but at least it's a lot better than it was. We put in 10 park benches at Penitentia Creek Park. We created, right. yeah. Tim Warren. Well, one is right. one. One is yours. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, not more. This is what we've done in the past. Uh, we created uh, banners for the Berryessa Road that should be put back up. They were taken down to uh, advertise or encourage people about the census, and then they will put them back up for us. And uh, let's see. And eventually, we'll be working on that, and hopefully, getting going on the uh, community center mural. So those are the things we've done, five things that we've done in the past. So uh, we certainly don't wanna give any money back to the city when we got the grant. But uh, if you've got some more ideas, anybody has ideas, we'll be asking you to share that with us. We will have a board meeting uh, next Monday and we'll talk about some ideas that people have then too, so. If I may, Linda, to yes. the people in the audience, we're talking about approximately $2,500 uh, that, 
if we spent the budget as currently planned, we would end up with an excess of $2,500 on the grant. So it's an opportunity for us to take that money and reprogram it with the city's approval uh, to do something for the beautification of the community. So if you have ideas, please get them to me or to one of the board members and we'll ensure that it gets into the board meeting for consideration and possible funding. Thank you. Thanks for filling that in. That's much better, yeah. So, all right, well, we have a report from Captain Ta. So you're on, Captain Ta. <laughs> Hi, Linda. There? Thank you. There yeah. you Hi, Linda. Thank you. I, I noticed that Chief Garcia was on too, so I'm going to. Oh, is he? Oh. Yeah, I'm going to defer to him if you guys wanted to do uh, that tribute first here. Or no, I'll let I, you. I, we'll, I, we'll let you do your report if you okay. want. Okay. And then, All right. yeah. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. So uh, let me just start by saying thank you again, Linda, for having me. I, I always enjoy connecting with you guys. And I'm actually starting to like this Zoom stuff. It, it, um, <laughs> I know. It's got its bad side, uh, but it's it definitely is is great to be able to still connect with with everybody from all the different communities. So here is um, kind of my update this month for you guys. Uh, it looks like crime wise, uh, the crime that actually uh, I evaluate is is pretty good. Uh, we're kind of seeing a dip in the area for uh, violent crime, so uh, robberies are down. Uh, I will say that the assaults, uh, what we categorize as aggravated assaults, which are assaults with usually a little bit more injuries than just a simple assault. That's slightly uh, climbing a little bit. So I'm kind of seeing this in other segments of my territory as well. And what I've noticed is a lot of this stuff is uh, domestic related. So it's, it's happening between people at the house. Uh, I, I think we've kind of seen it uh, for several months kind of brewing with the virus and being home and being kind of uh, cooped up with each other for, yeah. for this extended period of time. So it is slightly uh, is slightly rising. So it's something I just want to put out to you guys. Just be aware of um, we are seeing more debt related uh, assaults. So people owing other people money. Uh, sometimes it's landlord tenant type of stuff, but sometimes it's just straight, you know, somebody owes money to another person and it causes an assault. Uh, so the locations that I would uh, just would like to mention tonight just kind of came up on my radar. Uh, there's uh, the Safeway on Barriessa Road. That, um, you know, that's that's got a lot of activity there, <laughs> uh, but it's it's very uh, low level stuff. Usually, it's kind of a petty theft uh, that somehow either employees or loss prevention get involved in it, and then it kind of ramps up. A little bit more. We have some after hours kind of activity at the Denny's over off of Barriester Road. Uh, oh. that, that's kind of common too. Some of these after hours, 24 hour uh, fast food establishments will kind of see a little bit of a, a uptick in activity as their business increase. And a couple of other locations that uh, came on my radar this month was the Quail Hill Senior Apartments. So I, I think a little bit of the same trend that I was talking to you about with just kind of being cooped up. And then the Dollar Tree on Capitol Avenue and and the, obviously the creek always is um, uh, kind of a, on my radar. So those are the, looks like five locations. I'm just kind of watching, uh, trending citywide. As you guys know, we got past the elections. So we had a staffing solution set in place for the entire week of the elections, just in case uh, certain things went awry. So I'm, I'm glad to say that uh, things did not go that way. So uh, we are good there. Uh, citywide, we're kind of seeing a lot of homeless related concerns. Uh, as you guys know that um, the city now is is doing a kind of a trash pickup now uh, mm. because it was it was getting pretty bad in certain areas where uh, the, the sanitary uh, aspect of, of some of these encampments, uh, it was kind of a fine balance between how how dangerous that was compared to the virus. And then citywide, we're kind of seeing some reckless driving and some speed contests kind of erupting. Uh, yeah. that, that's trending kind of all over the city. I don't think in, in our area here, it's more as prevalent, but some of the outskirt areas of the city uh, with the intersections that are kind of wide. Um, so we've been working really hard 
uh, with our swing and midnight teams. Uh, when we have an overlap between those two teams and uh, call volume is low, we'll form some racer enforcement detail officers that will go out and they'll aggressively uh, deal with this problem. Uh, on follow-up, we do vehicle seizures. I think we talked about this last time where, as you guys know, sometimes we try to stop a vehicle and they take off from us. Uh, mm -hmm. It creates a lot of danger to the community to chase them for a traffic infraction. So if we're able to get a license plate, we can go to a judge and get him to sign a vehicle seizure uh, document for us and we can go and impound that vehicle after the fact. So we've been doing that pretty aggressively too. We're finding that not all of these vehicles live in San Jose. Some of them are living in other cities, some of them as far up as uh, the North and the East Bay. Uh, we still have the spectator ordinance in place. So we've been using that as often as we can. As you guys know, that's a thousand dollar fine for people that are participating in these sideshow, uh, mm. even as spectators. So that's been pretty effective on at least if we can't get some of those violators right there on the spot, we can address this behavior with this spectator ordinance. And we've been talking with DOT all over the city pretty aggressively about how we can uh, put some of the devices in to kind of slow people down. Uh, we've been talking about road dots. Uh, there's a pilot program up in Contra Costa County that we're looking at. We're gonna be talking with them to see where they are uh, with that. And, and basically there's these dots that are put in the roadway that prevent people from doing donuts. So spinning mm -hmm. around. Uh, so I, I don't know where their study is, but they've been doing some environmental impact studies and some traffic studies already. So that'll give us a little bit of a head start with our DOT uh, people. And then also the radar displays. We have uh, the mobile units that we can deploy throughout the city. So if you guys see a certain area that is more prone for speed, uh, let me know and I can, I can see what I can do to put one there for about a week. The batteries last for about a week. If there's more road traffic, then uh, because it gets used up more, the batteries may last a little bit less. So um, we can swap that out if the battery goes dead. So that's my presentation. Do you guys have any questions? I don't, but this is why we like you to come because you give us a lot of information. We really Maybe too much sometimes, <laughs> huh? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> People enjoy having you uh, tell us what's going on and, and telling us, you kind of remind us that we have a pretty good district that we live in too. So. You know, it's pretty nice to hear, but it, and it's nice to know what's going on because then we can be more aware, you know, and, and let you know what we see. Right. Yeah, hey. you guys have a pretty good area and you guys are very involved. So those are two very good combinations. What yep. happened at, on the, uh, the death on McKee and Capitol with the, the train? I don't know about that one. Um, the train... Light, light rail. Light, on the, the light, light rail. Light rail. Yes, light rail. I don't have that information off the top of my head, but I can sh I can follow up with that with you, Sharon. I either text or I can get back to the group. If but, I may, uh, Captain, uh, to tell this is Dick Santos. Unfortunately, I was right there in Capitol when it started raining bad, and evidently someone was hit right there in the railroad in the light rail tracks right between the two malls there on Capitol right before I get to McKee. It looks like a death. He had the yellow uh, canvas over him and had every police yeah. and sheriff and everyone there. So it was a sad time. It was about 12 o'clock um, yesterday. Oh. Yeah. yeah. So I ran the spread from this past week. So that didn't come up on my spread. I know, though, in driving that area at night, uh, it, it can sometimes be very confusing when you're taking a left turn and, and some of those. Uh, those barriers, you, I, I see a lot of cars just accidentally go onto the, the rail. Oh um, gosh. Yeah, and it, it, it's, I think it's hard too, driving at night uh, with my night vision and I'm sure everybody is kind of in the same boat. Sometimes if you're not familiar with that area, uh, you can kind of get stuck on that rail pretty easy. So oh. I, I don't, offhand, I don't know the circumstances on that. I do know that every so often uh, that does occur. I'll have to get back to you on that though, Sharon. <laughs> Okay. Are we looking at uh, improving the lighting in, in that intersection there? On McKee? And or when the, the, where the accident happened? I, I don't know, um, Assemblyman, the details of that crash. So certainly if lighting was a factor, then we would 
Uh, it was a lightning captain. It was a, like I say, about one o'clock somewhere in there in the daytime. It looked like the person just jumped in front of the light rail. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, and you know what I'm kind of seeing? Uh, I'm, I'm seeing kind of um, bad driving behavior. And I know I've been working with our motorcycle unit. Uh, they are they're doing their best. Um, just so you guys know, they spend their time in the morning commute and then they spend their time in the afternoon commute. And in between those two times, they do uh, selective enforcement. So if you can encourage folks to uh, go to the traffic enforcement website and you can put down your name, uh, the location that uh, this stuff is happening, I can work to try to get some of those motorcycle officers out there. We've been talking about trying to bring on more patrol officers to be trained on radar. So that's, that's tricky for us because it's a long certification process. It's 40 hours. So for us to take an officer uh, off the streets for a full week, um, it, it's tricky, you know, with staffing being as thin as it is with all the other demands that we've been going through. So we're trying to see if we can uh, get in maybe two or three officers here and there as the new motorcycle officers come in, they train up their folks. So hopefully I can get some more radar uh, trained patrol officers out in the, the general patrol area. So I think that would be very helpful. So I'll report back on that probably next month and see where we are with that. It looks like there's a question. I don't know how to, Eric, what do we do about that where it says Q and A and it's got a one there. So somebody's asking a question. Participants, is that? Can you see that, I think Eric? I see it. It's, uh, I, I can read it for you guys. It oh, says, okay. um, does it make sense to film and report cars for doing burnouts in the neighborhood? For a while, these kids have been pre predictable every day, but it doesn't make sense to call when they're already gone uh, in a minute, a moment later, what should we do? So that's a good question. So I talked about the, the vehicle seizure uh, impounds and um, historically, when we go in front of a judge and we ask for the ability to uh, seize a car, that information has to come from somebody. It can't be just anonymous. So let me give you two different scenarios. So one scenario that I've, I've come across quite a bit was people will screen grab something off of the internet. So for example, you see something trending on Twitter and there's some caption on there saying that this occurred at you know, story in white or, or, or wherever, uh, but the video itself is from an unknown person. Mm -hmm. Something like that would, would not be something that we would be able to introduce to a judge because we don't know the authentic, authenticity of, of that um, video. Even if there's some relevant details like a license plate or something where it's easily kind of identifiable, that's still gonna be, uh, very hard for us to bring that in court. So uh, if we know, let's say if we know that the, it's a, a, a certain person because of a license plate, we would have to do some follow-up ourselves to try to see if we can on view some of those violations. Let me give you a second scenario. So a second scenario, a citizen actually filmed something. And let's say, Linda, you filmed something and you provide it to me and it shows the same kind of the image that, that we're just kind of describing. And it has a license plate and we can certainly uh, verify that you took it, uh, the video, and, and you could tell me the date and the time, the location. I could actually use that for follow-up for a vehicle impound. But I, I do agree that some of these things, they happen so quickly. And by the time the community calls it in and it goes through the dispatch system, they're 10 or 15 minutes gone and, and, and they're now moving across some other section of the city. I would still encourage people to call that in because what's happening is they're moving all through the city that night and we're trying to kind of address that as they erupt somewhere else. So as we get officers on scene, we can start kind of reacting to where they're moving next and officers then start pulling people over for reckless driving, they pull them over for some vehicle code violations, and um, we can certainly take enforcement action if we know what cars we're looking for. So even if they're already gone from this first incident, it's still very helpful for us because 
we're dealing with them all throughout that evening. So I would, I would just please encourage uh, people to call it in. If you have something distinct about that vehicle, you know, a, a lime green Dodge Charger with a black stripe, that's super helpful for us. Right. Okay, we need to move along. Um, are you gonna speak uh, about or say something about uh, the chief later on when we get to that part or? Absolutely, yeah, I've got, <laughs> I've got nothing but great words about the chief, <laughs> okay. it's been wonderful. Well, we're gonna first do a slide. One of the things we've talked about uh, for several months is we appreciate the police department in, in uh, San Jose. And, and particularly, of course, with, with our local area because you guys have always been so responsive to us and always attending our meetings every month for, for several years now. And it's really nice, it's a good way to be able to communicate with you and uh, you with us. And, and so, um, Ty did a lot of research here and um, gave, so he's going to do a slide presentation of a comparative uh, uh, other cities. And I'll let Ty explain more how he did his research. All right, Ty, you're up. Thank you. Eric, can you put up the, the, the presentation? I don't and believe I was sent one, but you can present one if you have it on your machine. Oh, okay. So how do I do that? Do I go to... <laughs> How do I do that? Share screen button. Where is that puppy? In the bottom of the Zoom meeting. Uh, yeah. Okay. Green share, share screen. Got it. Yeah. Okay. And it says host disabled participant screen sharing. I don't want that, right? Oh, I think Linda's, you, you might have to allow uh, screen sharing on your I did it. settings. Try it again, Ty. So I hit OK. Mm -hmm. Try it again. OK. Share screen. OK. And if I go here, I go quick. OK. There you go. Okay. All right. All right. Um, this will take about five, seven minutes. Uh, first of all, you know, this is not the most comprehensive. This is not a research paper, but it was my attempt to try to understand how we're served by the police department. And I chose to do this in a way by looking at comparatively across cities that are within plus or minus 20% of our population as a fair comparison. Um, and this might not be the most current data, but it does reflect um, meaningful data that is important. And I also want to look at it when I could chronologically. So, um, the first slide I share with you is the nature of violent crimes. And if you look at this chart, I took, again, the city's plus or minus 20% of San Jose's population, went to Law Street and got the graph that shows uh, violent crime from a period starting in 1984 to 2016. So there's, there are a few years missing, but it does show you that that lovely line at the very bottom on the right-hand side is San Jose. We have the lowest violent crime rate relative to cities of our, you know, roughly our size, and we're below the national average. And so you can see some of the cities that will compare to Fort Worth, Charlotte, San Francisco, Jacksonville, Florida, Indianapolis, Columbus, Austin. Um, so that's a good first cut look at, you know, violent crime. Um, and I, I was impressed by that. So next I said, okay. That's cool, but what about uh, how effective are they? And so I went and I looked again at those cities um, and I was looking at the first column is of course the city. The second column is the number of officers per, per 10,000 population. The total number of officers, total police department, which is more than just the officers themselves. They also have staff and the like per, per 10,000 population and the total police department. And you can see from that that this San Jose has a very small uh, officer presence per 10,000 residents. You know, it's half the size of Fort Worth, half the size of Indianapolis, less than half the size of Austin, Charlotte, Jacksonville, and San Francisco comes in at 26.4 per 10,000, we have nine. Uh, it's extraordinary statistic when you think about it, how effectively we are managed. 
then the idea also is how big an area do you have to police? And the column second from the right is square miles. San Jose has 176.5 square miles, a population of just under a million. Um, look at San Francisco. They have 46, 47 square miles with a population of about 880,000. So you would think that uh, not only are we well served from a population base, but also thinking about the scope of what they have to do as a police force to manage uh, the civil order over 176 square miles. Um, so then I said, okay, that's, these are really impressive. Now, what about response times? Um, because, you know, it's, it'd be great. You want to make sure that your police force is responding. And so I looked at priority one response times. In San Jose, the goal is six minutes for a priority one response. Their current, you know, when I looked at the numbers, it was 7.22 minutes. Uh, if you look at Fort Worth at 9.27, Indianapolis at 7.58, Austin in 8.7 minutes. It's not as if there's, you know, we are woeful in that domain. They're, they're respectable numbers relative to the other cities. The one outlier is Jacksonville. How they get a three minute response time in Jacksonville, <laughs> it, it's worth noting. Um, and even in San Francisco, which is such, such, such a small geographic footprint, it's 5.8 minutes uh, is their actual response time. And I, there's not a whole bunch of data on priority two. Uh, but if you look at San Jose, our actual response times um, in priority two um, is about 19 minutes. The oh. thing though that's, that's, that's important to note though is that these trends are flat. It's, we're not improving, but if you think about it, the only way to improve those kind of numbers would be to have a much larger police presence uh, and closer to the points of crime. Um, and so that, that's a question of public policy. Do we want to fund an uh, expansion of the police department when we already have extraordinary numbers? Um, then I wanted to look at, okay, how do, what does it cost us? And I went to the budgeting process and the cost of our protection is pretty stable. It's growing a little bit faster than inflation, but there's nothing unreasonable about it. San Jose, uh, according to the budget numbers I see are about 40, $464 million in 2019 to fund the San Jose Police Department, up about 7.1% per year since 2017, 2017, 2019, sorry. Um, and compared that with San Francisco, they, they cost $590 million in 2019 to police San Francisco. So um, there are probably many more statistics you could run, but from what I saw, I want to share that with the membership that I think we've got the best violent crime statistics in class. Uh, we have a very effective organization that uses a small force to patrol a large area. Uh, we have comparable priority one response times and they're efficient with taxpayer money. And so I wanted to share that um, as kind of a, a lead in the acknowledgement that we'll be having later today uh, or this evening with the retiring police chief. And I am open for questions. Anybody questions? I can't see people, so I don't know. I want to say, Ty, that was a really good job. I, I actually, uh, I pulled some stats just recently, uh, very similar to yours. And so uh, San Jose is the third largest city in California, and it's the 10th largest city in the United States. So if you look at uh, the other, obviously the other two large cities uh, in California, Los Angeles is the largest with about 3.9 million people and 9,000 sworn officers. And San Diego has 1.4 million people with 1,836 sworn officers. So uh, we, are, we are very, very small. And I think that from my 25 years experience, it's because uh, we do a lot of good proactive policing. And if, if we uh, continue on this uh, culture that we have here in San Jose, that's how we can maintain 
the safety for the community. So uh, I applaud you guys for working so hard with us because uh, support from the community is essential for us to go out there and do proactive work and feel supported, you know, for going out there and, and trying to uh, get to these problems before they become bigger. So that was a great presentation. Thank you. Yeah, just a comment, uh, Linda, through the chair. Yeah, Ty, a real good job. I was here in the heyday uh, when San Jose PD, when I was on from 68 to 2001, had about 1,400 officers. So she, when Chief Garcia got to be chief, he had to do more with less, and the challenges were extreme. And I take my hat off to him, which we'll be saying more. He had to do a heck of a job with a smaller force and did a great job. And so thank you for those comments, Ty. Okay, I'm going to go out of share now and turn it to you, uh, Linda. Okay, great. Thank you. You're well, welcome. that's um, what I'd like to say. One of the reasons we had um, wanted to do this, we, we've also, you know, we've appreciated all of the um, times that police officers over the years have come to our meetings, which is really nice. Mm -hmm. And then we did, uh, one year we said, let's do coffee with the cops at the community center and we did it in conjunction with the um, seniors that put on uh, their boutique in November. And, and then Santa Claus would help direct people down the road to go in and see the cops, you know, down because we were at the other end of the, the building. And, um, and so I thought, well, we'll just do that once, but people kept asking, can we do that again? And so we did it three years in a row. And of course we didn't get to do it the last time, but, it's just, and all these officers that showed up, it just wasn't one or two or three. We had six, seven, eight, nine, you know, and they would all be there. The captain would be there. It was really such a nice time and people enjoyed just getting to, you know, there was no, you know, uh, no, there was nothing out that we had, it, uh, I can't remember what I wanted to say. Um, there was, we just had people talk and they would just the police were walking around the rooms and people were in little groups talking to each officer and so it really was very very nice you know and so that's why it's building that good reputation and and people feel comfortable with the police and so that's why we have wanted to to pay our respects to the department and then when we found out the chief was going to retire we said well what we better get this done man and do it in november and so um, I contacted a few people quickly and it was kind of at the last minute and uh, uh, people wanted to speak about uh, the chief and, and pay their respects to him. So, um, hi, Eddie, there you are. <laughs> I see you now. <laughs> um, so I'm going to, Captain Todd, did you want to say something first and then we'll go on with the other presenters? Uh, I, I, uh, I think you guys said it all, but Chief Garcia has been a, a an amazing leader. I mean, he took, as as uh, Mr. Santos said, he took the probably the worst part of of uh, going through pension reform and and rebuilding this department. And it was it was tough because a lot of people uh, they were overworked. And uh, we have very very good officers here, and the chief really did an amazing job uh, throughout his tenure as chief. So um, I, I applaud all of his hard work because it's evident. You know, we all see it and we appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you, Jason. All right, the next person up is Kenson Chuk, Assembly Member Kenson Chuk. All right, thank you very much, Linda, for inviting me here. And thanks, Ty, for the presentation. First of all, I wanna really thank all those uh, peace officers that working around the clock to protect uh, protect us and protect our properties. And uh, Eddie, I don't see your face there. You know, I, I definitely had the honor to uh, work with Eddie when I was on the San Jose City Council. So all in all, we have worked for a good 12 years together and uh, very uh, happy to have the opportunity to celebrate his 28 years of outstanding service to our uh, great city of San Jose. And during my previous life as a San Jose City Council, uh, we went through a lot of bad times. This is uh, we, uh, Captain Todd talking about the pension reform and so on and so forth. When I joined the City Council, the San Jose has 1,400 um, uh, peace officers, uh, police, full-time. 
And when I left the council about six years ago, we have less than 900 to cover this uh, great area that uh, uh, Ty just uh, presented to us, 176 uh, square miles. And, and remember, those uh, 900 people are on, are actually in three different shifts. So in every shift, we have less than 200 or 200, a little bit over 200 uh, police are patrolling our, our great city. So I want to definitely thank uh, uh, Chief for taking the, the, the room in the last four years during this very difficult time and uh, pretty much rebuilt the, the San Jose uh, Police Department. And as an uh, immigrant, uh, uh, Chief Garcia and I, we, we share a common desire of, of uh, achieving our um, American dream and at the same time uh, nurse nourish our compassion toward our community. So that's why I think Chief got a lot of support, um, re respect from law enforcement. And there he is, I can see him now. Law <laughs> enforcement and, and also the community uh, at large. Even the IPA has some positive say, things to say about you. So thumbs up Chief. Uh, but more importantly, Chief uh, possess a special quality of personal human contact. They always uh, have a friendly smile and, and ready to give you a warm handshake. And when he misses my call, he always call back as soon as he can. So this is the best sense of assurance that Eddie gave me and he's always there when our community uh, needed him. As an elected official, and, and we, and, and Chief probably uh, will share that we, of, we oftentimes face important issues that evoke emotional debates. And I really appreciate Eddie's uh, extraordinary talent to remain calm throughout uh, his response to our community. So great job there, Chief, mm -hmm. and also, uh, I can see Eddie's leadership at the San Jose Police Department will continue to be seen for many, many years to come in San Jose because of the solid foundation and he has worked in the past three decades. So Chief, I, I thank you very much from the bottom of my heart and, and the best wishes to you at, in your retirement. You deserve a rest and a vacation <laughs> that you are probably planning. And since, since we're doing this virtually, I have sent ahead, well, we haven't received it. Maybe, well, I will track it down. Uh, a state uh, a joint resolution with our Senator Bob Wachowski in your honor. Oh, we got oh, it. Oh, you got it. We were oh, we wondering. Got it. Yeah, you know, all right, uh, good. Uh, you know, I check with Ty Linda, and we yeah. say we're maybe in the community center. So I'm really happy that you have received it. And, and please accept this as a big token of appreciation from myself and our community. So thank you very much, Chief, and happy retirement. Thank you, some of the member. I'm humbled. Thank you very much. And Tim Roscoe, representing White Senator Rykowski, you wanted to say. Uh, just briefly, hi, Chief. Um, you know, <laughs> we're extremely proud of you, what you have accomplished over your 28 years. I'm here on behalf of Senator Bob Wykowski uh, to congratulate you, uh, to thank you for that long and distinguished co career. You know, you've accomplished a lot. And one thing that I can be extremely proud of is that while you were police chief, you helped diversify the police department uh, and make it more reflective of our communities and of the city's population. Um, I'm, you know, from the LGBT community and I know you have been very supportive of the LGBT community. Uh, you, I remember going to a coffee with a cop uh, at a coffee house next to the LGBT center and, you know, things, those types of actions uh, really mean a lot uh, to uh, that particular community. But so again, you know, thank you so much for um, being there, listening to all of our communities and neighborhoods and uh, your dedication to keeping our, our uh, city safe. Thank you so much, Chief. And you know, Senator Wykowski is a signator to that uh, resolution. Um, so 
we're proud of you. He's proud of you. Uh, he's not here at the moment. He's away for a week, but uh, he would be here otherwise. Congrats. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tim. Yeah. Is a representative for Lon Deep's office here? I think I saw somebody. Yeah, unfortunately, council member uh, Lon Deep wasn't able to make it with a last minute emergency. Um, but he wanted me to express his, his gratitude to you, uh, Chief Garcia, and everything you've done, uh, not only for District 4, uh, but San Jose uh, as a whole. Uh, he went ahead and uh, is giving you a commendation, and I'll pull it up on the screen uh, right now for you. Uh, we'll make sure it makes its way to you um, uh, through mail or however it's easier for you, uh, Chief Garcia. But here's the commendation we, we have for you. Thank you very much, Paul. I'm, I'm humbled nice. and honored. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. I thought I saw you up there already. Um, the next person is the Santa, uh, Dick Santos from the Santa Clara Valley Water District. Dick, there you go. Go ahead, Dick. Linda, is this the time that do you want me to speak for the BCAC and recognizing Chief Garcia? Yes. Okay. Of course, from the Water District, all seven board of directors, thank you, Chief, for a wonderful job. There's no question. Uh, before we get started, <clears throat> I am the fire representative of the Re San Jose Police of Fire Retirement Board, <clears throat> the, Re the fire retiree. And uh, last Thursday, a Chief's name came up with about 20 others to retire. And that's probably the first time I wanted to say no, but I don't have the authority. <laughs> so anyway, uh, we wanted to, of course, uh, say congratulations on his retirement. And it was unanimous, of course, and many, many well wishes were said there. Let's talk about um, Eduardo Eddie Garcia. Uh, Chief Garcia was born in San Juan, Puerto Rico. And at a young age, his family moved to San Jose, California. Eddie has a bachelor's degree from the Union Institute and a university and was hired in February of 1992. He worked the patrol division and then was selected to work narcotics enforcement team. After working in narcotics enforcement team, he was selected to work in a special operations called MERGE, Mobile Emergency Response Group and Equipment. Chief Garcia was promoted to Sergeant in August of 2000. He worked patrol and then was selected to work as night detective and later as homicide investigator. He was promoted to lieutenant December of 2005. As a lieutenant, he commanded the community service division and the special investigation unit. He was promoted to captain in February of 2010. And that's where I first had a chance to meet uh, Chief Garcia. He came out to Aviso. He said, what do you got to say and how can I help? And that's just what he did. He's a people person, community oriented, and he cares. And he came out and said, well, Give me an opportunity. And he did the job, as always. And by the way, um, the Chief, thank you for uh, Captain Michael Kim. He's done a fine job out in our area. We sure appreciate it. He, had, um, he held um, command of the city central division until he was transferred to the Bureau of Investigation. On December 25th, 2011, he was designated as the acting deputy chief for Bureau of Investigation. On February the 5th, 2012, Chief Garcia was promoted to deputy chief. Later that same year, he assumed the role of deputy chief of the Bureau of Administration. On January 15th of 2013, Chief Garcia was assumed the role of acting chief. On December 10th, 2013, he was promoted to assistant chief of police. Assistant Chief Garcia assumed the role of acting chief of police on January 19, 2016 upon the retirement of former Chief Larry Escavel and was confirmed as police chief on March 1st, 2016. And I attended that meeting. It was an honor for me to go and see the swearing in the ceremonies. We're very proud of Chief Garcia and still are. Uh, the little things that you don't know, uh, I've been a member of La Raza Roundtable probably for 54 years. And when Chief Garcia made chief, he said, I'll be there, which he came as an officer anyway. But he said, I'll be there in invocations. And uh, it's rare that he wasn't there to make a meeting because of some duties or whatever have you. He's went through a lot with his son, near death and many, many issues. And he was still there and God willing, his son is back healthy and doing what he wants to do. And Eddie was there for him, but he was always in the community. 
And during his tough times and challenges, he never wavered. And he did a real fine job for all of us. So with that, Chief, I can say um, congratulations on your retirement. Thank you for a job well done. And we wish you and your family to be safe. Thank you so much. I'm very humble and honored. Thank you. And uh, Superintendent of Berryessa School District, Dr. Roxanne Fuentes. Hi, Ron. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, good evening, Chief Garcia. Um, first of all, congratulations. I'm Dr. Fuentes, Superintendent of Schools for Berryessa Union School District. I know this evening we also have one of our trustees in the audience, uh, trustee Dr. David Cohen here on behalf of the school board. Uh, we just wanna wish you, um, you know, well in your retirement, but also wanted to take a few moments to you know, thank you for your, your 28 years of service to the city of San Jose to our Berryessa community, but especially the service you provided to our children in Berryessa and, you know, and their families. We have deeply valued um, our partnership with San Jose PD. Uh, you know, you've done amazing work along with your officers in ensuring the safety of our schools. You know, we have um, support personnel at the ready whenever we need them. I've made calls in the middle of the night on the weekend and support is always there. And so we have a lot of trust in having ongoing you know, security. Um, but also I think one of the things I wanna share too is the um, amount of fun that you and your officers have brought to our students as well. And it's always a great opportunity when they not only see you in that you know leadership role in that role of safety but also in that role of friendship and um and you know and support to students participating in our career days being there during our spirit rallies having your officers dance across the gym floor with our <laughs> students is always a, a ton of fun and and it allows that you know human interaction that you know our students get to know that officers are there to help and officers are there to support them when they're in trouble and when they're in a time of need. And I know um, you've always <laughs> been there uh, for us when we've had those challenging situations and we've had families that needed additional services and support that went beyond what the school district could provide. And under your leadership, you know, your officers have been there to help guide our families um, to safety and to the resources that they need. And so finally, again, just, you know, want to thank you and given your own personal background, um, you know, and your leadership role, uh, you know, thank you for being a wonderful role model to all of the boys and girls of Berryessa. Uh, on behalf of the board, we have a wonderful plaque here that we'll be sending your way um, in appreciation for your 28 years of service. Thank you so much for everything that you've done and be safe. Thank you very much, Doctor. Thank you. It was an honor, uh, and I'm humbled. Thank you. All right. Our next up is Berryessa Community Center Supervisor Janae Whitcomb. Good evening, everybody. Um, on behalf of the Berryessa Community Center, we would just want to thank you, Chief of Police Eddie Garcia, for your dedication to the City of San Jose, um, specifically the Berryessa community. Through your dedication and leadership, you have made our community stronger. We are grateful for, this, for your service in ensuring the safety of our community. And thank you to you and your wonderful team of officers for always supporting and more importantly, having a presence at the events that we have hosted at the Berryessa Community Center. Um, Linda had touched on a couple of them, such as the Coffee with the Cop. We also have partnerships with your officers and our after school program. Um, it's always just joyous to see the smiles that your officers um, provide to our participants of our community center. So thank you very much. Um, other than that, we wish you a joyous future and su su success in your future endeavors. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. And I'm the last one up. So uh, on behalf of the various Citizens Advisory Council, um, I just have to tell you a little short story about, we were at, a, I was at a, a community meeting, it was sponsored by the city. I can't remember what it was exactly, but Margie Matthews was there, Margie Fernandez, and she was in the back talking to this police officer and she comes up forward and she's, Linda, you remember Eddie, right? And I said, I do? Why do I remember Eddie? I don't know. <laughs> and then she said, 
Well, it turns out that her son and my son and Eddie all went to St. Victor's together and they're still good, close friends. Uh, you know, Don, I hope Donald's watching tonight. He wanted to make sure he and, and my son, David, and my daughter, Debbie, all wanted to make sure they saw this tonight. So, but I get to read you the, our little confirmation here. And it says that this is what it looks like. And it's kind of heavy. So you lot. And then I'm going to read it because I can't hold it and read Chief Garcia's service began in 1992 as a parole patrol officer. He has worked in narcotics, enforcement, special operations, homicide, and special investigations. Accomplishments in these roles were rewarded by promotions culminating in his confirmation as chief of police in 2016. As he retires, Chief Garcia can take great pride in leading the best force among similar sized US cities. We have been well served and we thank you. Sorry about me, the president of the association, but it's from our entire board and our membership. Uh, every one of us were, were in full agreement that we needed to show our respect for you and, and give you all of our good wishes for your retirement, even though you're retiring awfully young, I'd say, but <laughs> but we will miss you. And But uh, I think like Dick Santos says, you, you've laid a good foundation uh, for the police department. So hopefully we'll continue with all of that good uh, feelings that we have with our, you know, department and our your service. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Is there anything else you want to say? Because we're about done. Yeah. You know what? Just real quickly, I won't take too much of your, uh, people's time, but I, I, first of all, I can't tell you how honored I am and how humbled I am uh, to receive the, the commendations you know, I'll be honest with you, I couldn't do this alone. Um, you know, if it wasn't for the amazing men and women that we have working for this police department and your cooperation and the unbelievable uh, partnership that we have had with our leaders, uh, whether it be at the assembly to council, you know, I will tell you a lot of police chiefs around the country can't boast what we can boast is that, you know, with everything that's going on nationally, you know, I've never met a neighborhood in the city of San Jose, regardless of language spoken, economic status or racial makeup, that doesn't want more San Jose police officers to keep them safe. Now they want, they, they want to be uh, policed fairly, uh, but they also want us there. And as I tell the recruits time and time again, that's a precious gift. It's a precious gift um, because as our young officers look around the country, they need to realize that what we have in San Jose is special, uh, that we need to continue to cultivate that. Uh, and it's something that, uh, that that's, that's precious. You know, it's interesting as we talk about, you know, going to community meetings and Barry Esther, what have you, and some of you know this, but uh, you know, this is where, you know, when we talk about how this, this young kid from Puerto Rico moved mm -hmm. to, to San Jose, California, learned how to speak English in San Jose, and that's why he wanted to become a police officer. Well, if you drill down and get micro, um, that was in the North Valley Barry Esther area. I still recall living with uh, other uh, family members in an apartment off of Cropley and Marill uh, when we first moved uh, to San Jose. Uh, every time I would drive by St. Victor's, every time I go to Berryessa, it was a flashback uh, mm -hmm. to being uh, to being when I, in my youth, uh, and and so it was always like going home. Uh, you know, at the time, you know, I just uh, you know remember the the police departments that I wanted to apply to. And I just said, you know what, San Jose is something special because uh, this is where it all began for me. I did live uh, a dream, uh, you know, and I continue to tell your police officers uh, to always support their community and they will. Uh, but ultimately, in the end, I just uh, forever grateful and humble. And I tell you, even in the worst of times, uh, you know, I would look down to my lapel and see those four stars and I just couldn't believe it. Mm -hmm. I mean, even in the worst of times, I, I never had a bad day at work. Uh, you know, I tell you, you know, it's a, it's a difficult job, but I knew what I was getting into. Uh, and I just had a dream come true. Uh, you know, I was raised, uh, you know, later on in my life was raised by a single mom, uh, you know, and my stars or her stars too. Uh, and it's just one of those things that I would like to tell anybody that anything's possible. Uh, you know, San Jose is an amazing city. California is an amazing state. This country is amazing where anything is possible for anybody. And I look at my situation in the same way. And so, uh, I couldn't do this job without your support. Uh, I couldn't do it without the support of the rank and file of the men and women that risk their lives every day. Uh, you know, and so I just thank you. I'm humbled. Uh, and we'll see what the future holds. Uh, but I will forever 
uh, hold, particularly uh, D4 and the Berryessa. I mean, that's home for me. Um, and so thank you very much. And I'm deeply honored. Congratulations. I have a few, um, couple announcements just before we end the meeting here tonight. And the one is that uh, in December, we will be having elections for new officers or officers for the, uh, and they're all listed. The positions are listed on your agendas. Um, so the, all of the members should have gotten them. So all of the positions are certainly open. Uh, we haven't recommended anybody uh, yet for uh, election for next uh, in December. So if you're interested, we will be sending a survey out to see who would like to join us. We meet for like an hour and a half on the second Monday of every month uh, for our general membership and uh, this uh, third Monday of the month for about an hour and a half uh, to plan out what we wanna be doing for the rest of the, uh, the other months. So it's not a whole lot of time, but it's really uh, uh, a nice group of people that are really dedicated to this community. And we have a youth member and he's been really faithful about coming until just recently, but he's back again. And uh, so we try to keep the youth in, involved in, in our association also to get their viewpoints. So um, uh, it's, we, we welcome anybody that would like to run for office to join us. We've, we've been kind of short a couple of people this year uh, for the first time. So uh, be thinking about it. We'll be calling on you and, and seeing if you would like to join us. So uh, we'll, I thank everybody that, that came tonight. Uh, came. I wish we were there in person. That's the saddest part, but, uh, but we appreciate it. I mean, we really wanted to make sure that, that we showed our respect for not only uh, the police department, but for you, Eddie, as the, as the uh, police chief. And, but it's because, you know, that our connection with the police and Barry Essa that's been so positive over the years uh, that, that we really are grateful for how things are being run in this city. So, all right, anybody else have any statements to say? If not, do I hear a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Right, Thank there you. we go. Have a great Thanksgiving. Yeah. Be safe, Thanks, everybody. Guys. Thanks, Thank everyone. You. Thank you, everybody. Be safe. All right. Hey. Bye, guys. Nice Bye. seeing you, Eddie. <laughs> Keep your shape. Great. <laughs> I'm going to do my best. I'm going to do my best. <laughs> ah, you're looking great. <laughs> Thank you. Okie doke. Thanks, Eric. <laughs>